Hello there, everyone. I'm going to show you how to fill in your colored pencil color wheel. So last time we drew our color wheel out, three rings, 12 sections, and we labeled it with our colors. So now we're going to fill it in using only three pencils. We're using True Blue. This is Prismacolor number 903. We're using Canary Yellow, which is Prismacolor 916. And Carmine Red, Prismacolor 926. Now you can also use a blending stump or a needed or a, a colorless blender. You'll need your sandpaper paddle if you have it. Oh, that's not my colorless blender, that's the charcoal. This is my colorless blender. There we go. Colorless blender is just a colored pencil with no pigment in it. It's just wax. So it's very important to keep your blending stump clean between uses. So earlier I was using charcoal, so I'm just rubbing my blending stump on my sandpaper paddle, blowing off the excess. If your sandpaper or if your blending stump gets too dull, you can always use an X-Acto knife to sharpen it. Do not put this into a pencil sharpener. It will tear it apart, especially an electric pencil sharpener. Don't do that. So sandpaper and an X-Acto knife are the way to go. When you're blending your colors, you always want to start with your weakest color. The weakest color in the primaries is yellow. Red and blue can be kind of equal to one another. So I'm going to start with yellow on my color wheel. I'm going to treat the whole wedge, not just each row. And remember, you're using the edge of your pencil, not your tip. And you want to go in concentric circles. It's called member scumbling, also referred to as the Brillo pad method. You don't want to go in one direction. You want to go in multiple directions. So if you do tiny circles, you won't end up with lots of lines. Also keep in mind that your pencil lines will show through. You will want your pencil lines to be light. For my purposes, I needed them to be dark so that you could see them on the video. Now I've made my first pass with the edge of my colored pencil. I can still see white through. It's not solid yet. Again, I'm using the edge. I'm trying to keep equal pressure on the pencil. I'm going in circles still have some white there. Now I'm switching my grip so that I'm holding it more like a pencil and I'm going to apply firmer pressure only on this outside wedge. I want this outside wedge to be solid because I'm not going to put anything over top of it. You want to get it to that burnishing point. Remember burnishing? You want it to be solid with no white but you don't want so much that you get to that maximum wax point where you get chunky pieces of color pencil coming off the page. So now I have a solid burnished section on the outside and the rest of the wedge is slightly lighter. You can see there's a little bit of white paper still showing through that. So now let's look at how to create a mixed color. So I'm starting out the same using the edge of my pencil, not the tip. I'm going in circles or ovals, changing directions, a nice even coating of yellow all the way down the wedge. So you see how this wedge looks like the inside wedges here. It's not completely solid. There's still some white showing. Now I'm going to switch to my red. Now you notice how there's some blue on the, oh no, it's over here. Okay. You can see there's a little bit of blue on the inside of the the, the color pencil tip here. I don't want that to show up. So I'm going to actually clean it off on my sandpaper paddle like this, just so the blue comes off and there's nothing but red. You could do this with a paper towel as well, or you can use a scrap piece of paper and just clean it until it's nothing but color. So it's clean. Cause otherwise I'm going to mix that blue into here and I don't want that. Now red is strong, so I'm adding very light, gradual layers. Again, I'm going in ovals, circles and ovals. 
and I'm going to change directions. So you can see already I'm starting to see a yellow orange. Now I want it to look like orange when I'm done. So I am not there yet. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to blend with the yellow. So you can blend with the lighter color. I'm holding it more like a pencil. Going in circular motions, changing direction. So that looks pretty, pretty good. You can see there's still little areas that aren't quite even. Like I said, I'm going quickly. You're gonna go slower and make it look a lot nicer. So this matches a little darker than the yellow orange here, but a little lighter than the orange here. And that's okay. As long as my red orange is more red and my yellow orange is more yellow, I can leave that one alone. So I'm going to attempt to do the tertiaries now, and I'm gonna do it the exact same way I did before, but this time I'm going to sharpen my pencil because I'm running out of space. And like I had mentioned the other day, one trick that I like to do to save me from having to run back and forth if you don't have access to the trash can is sharpen it into the lid of your colored pencil pack. And then when you're done, you can just go ahead and dump that in the trash can. Just saves you some time. All right, I'm gonna color this in with yellow and fast forward through the video so you don't have to watch. You can use your blending stump if you see any areas that look like they're too chunky. You can use your blending stump to help pick those areas up. I'm rolling my blending stump as I'm doing this and what it's doing is it's picking up some of that excess red. But it'll only work if I have a clean section of the blending stump. So what that's done is it's picked up the wax and put it on the blending stump. So now I have a nice orange and yellow orange. Remember, I'm leaving these two wedges without being blended because we're not ready for those yet. Okay, there you have it. There's your red orange, orange, yellow orange, and yellow on your color wheel. You can go ahead and fill in the rest and I'll fast forward so that you can see what it looks like when it's done.